Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily, and now let's get to the news. Just a couple of years ago, high-end automakers could not believe their good luck in China. Sales were rocketing off the charts at a pace they had never seen before. But now, the party's over. In today's China, there's a backlash against conspicuous consumption, a backlash actively encouraged by the government, and exotic sports cars have been caught in the crosshairs. Sales at Bentley fell last year in a market that grew strong. Lamborghini fell more than 16% and sales of Ferraris were off nearly 30%. It wasn't supposed to happen this way. These brands dreamed of China generating as many sales as the US and Europe put together. Mazda is giving us a look at where the Mazda 2 will be heading in the future with its Hazumi concept that it showed in Geneva. The car gets the automaker's Kodo design language and features a newly developed diesel engine under the hood. No other details were released at this time. On Monday, we showed you the new Chevrolet Suburban. Today, we want to talk about its new anti-theft system, which also goes in the Tahoe and GMC Yukon and Yukon XL. These vehicles are highly targeted by thieves who love to make a quick buck by stealing the third row seat or the instrument cluster. But on these new utilities, the third row seat folds flat. It's no longer removable. And the instrument cluster is now vehicle specific. Ripping one out of one vehicle will not work in another. Smash and grab thieves are going to find that the rear quarter glass and backlight are wired to trigger the alarm if they get broken. Inside, there are two motion detectors that look like little dome lights on the overhead console. So even if someone manages to get inside without breaking the glass, the alarm will still go off. And if they crawl under the vehicle to cut the battery cable, the alarm will go off because it's got its own rechargeable battery. And if they try to jack the truck up to move it, the alarm will go off as well. It's probably impossible to make any vehicle completely theft-proof, but GM's new full-size utilities are going to make it a lot harder on the bad guys. And while that anti-theft technology adds cost, it will likely result in lower insurance premiums. Hey, do you have a hard time trying to figure out the letter combinations Cadillac uses to name its cars? Well, you're not the only one. Uwe Ellinghaus, Cadillac's global marketing chief, admits it's leaving customers confused, and he says the brand needs to revise its entire naming system. Remember, Uwe is the guy who came from BMW to redo Cadillac's image. And we're in complete lockstep with Ellinghaus. And we have one simple observation. Acura, Lexus, Infiniti, and Lincoln, are you listening? Even though you're unlikely in the market for one of these next vehicles, we like keeping you up to speed on the entire automotive industry. Yesterday, Ford unveiled the new versions of its medium-duty commercial trucks, the F650 and 750. Two powertrains are offered. One is a 6.7-liter turbo diesel V8, made into a six-speed automatic. The other is a 6.8-liter V10 gasoline engine, also paired to that six-speed. The gasoline engine can also be converted to run on CNG or LPG. The area behind the cab was redesigned so different types of bodies, like a tow truck, dump truck, or ambulance, can be fitted onto the chassis with little or no modification. The trucks will be available next year. Okay, enough of me talking already. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Here's one of the great things about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. Excellent traction. Do you need a ladder? Yes, I do. Okay. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Bradley wants to know, when a company replaces a model with a new design, why not take the old model and put an EV powertrain in it? The tooling is already there and the model has already been proven. Then EVs could have a lower price and higher profit level at the same time. Bradley, Coda tried that and it failed. It used an old Mitsubishi design on a car that was made in China, but it flopped. 
because when people buy a new car, they want the world to know they're driving a new one, not an old one. In fact, I think this explains why the new Chevy Silverado pickup is not selling very well. It's hard to tell the new one from the old one. Meanwhile, the GMC Sierra, which is mechanically identical, but obviously newer looking than the old model, is selling better. And the number one or two reason why people say they're buying that new Sierra is the styling. SeaTech has something to say about this too. Given the run-up of Ram truck sales to be near the Silverado, I wonder if we will see a quick refresh of the Silverado along with a price cut. I think you're on to something, SeaTech. Chevy knows it has a styling problem with the Silverado. And just as we saw a quick refresh of the Malibu, I think they're working on the same thing with the Silverado. It wouldn't take much. Even something as simple as a new grill, a distinctively new grill, could make a big difference. M360 asks, John, what's your Autoline insight on the recent recall of the Chevy Cobalt, Chevy HHR, etc. models in regard to their ignition switch failures? Well, I got two things to say about this. First, I've never heard of a failure like this before. Apparently, if you hang a bunch of keys on your key ring, that weight and years of jostling around can break the ignition switch, causing everything to turn off, including the engine, which cuts the power steering and brakes, and the airbags don't go off either. This has led to a number of accidents and fatalities. General Motors was aware of this problem years ago, but did nothing about it. I can only guess that this was at a time when the company was spiraling towards bankruptcy and decided it didn't need another black eye. But that was a terrible decision and one that is going to come back to haunt the company. This is going to cost GM hundreds of millions of dollars in lawsuits. I can only hope that the people who made this decision are the ones who were given the heave-ho during the bankruptcy. David Hephonimus wants to know, what do you make of Tesla's soaring stock price, the news of their new battery factory, and that Tesla with one vehicle is market capped at half a Ford? I like what Tesla is doing, but it seems a bit crazy to me, and I would like to hear your thoughts. David, I'm super impressed by what Tesla and Elon Musk have accomplished. They've just about got me turned into a believer. I've got a lot more to say about this, more than I can get into right now. Maybe I'll get into it in tomorrow's or Friday's show, and thanks for that question. And finally, HTG is as mystified as we are how Subaru keeps posting 24% increases in sales every month and wonders if it has anything to do with the br brutal winter here in the U.S. Any word if Subaru's Tom Dahl is sacrificing small animals to the polar vortex gods? This cold may have driven shoppers into Bible Belt showrooms. Actually, HDG, I don't have an answer for that. I just love the way you worded that question so much. I just wanted to throw it up there on the screen. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. We truly do like getting them. And before we go, remember to tune into AutoLine After Hours tomorrow night. We'll be delving into this topic of diesel water emulsion. Joining us will be Calvin Visser, the COO of a company called Fierce Fuel Systems. He will explain how they make it possible to add water to diesel fuel to greatly improve fuel efficiency and reduce emissions. And that should be a fascinating topic. And that wraps up today's report. Please tune in again tomorrow.